For those of you who have Argentina on their bucket list, rejoice! The country just opened its border to international visitors in November, so it's a good time to start planning for the trip now. From breathtaking scenery and soaring architecture to the finest wines and fascinating ballroom dances, we've rounded up to the top 14 things you must experience on your trip to the vibrant landscape of Argentina. First on our list, a hike in the Andes. If you're a hiker at heart, the mountains of Argentina are your calling. The Andes stretches nearly the entire length of the country's western edge and offers everything from high deserts to scenic lakes. Let's just say it's one hell of a hiking experience. You'll also find the continent's highest peak, otherwise known as the Roof of the Americas, on your trek to the Andes. You'll find a cultural route snaking its way upwards to Bolivia. The landscape can best be defined as a beautiful paradox. Harsh but vivid, the canyon itself is dry yet river scoured, overlooking mountainsides that have eroded over the passage of time, unveiling spectacular scallop formations wrapped in a spectrum of colors, bound to leave you awestruck. Next up, a speedboat ride to the Iguazu Falls. There are waterfalls, and then there's Iguazu Falls. The best part about this particular waterfall is its setting. The Iguazu Falls lie at the split between Brazil and Argentina. Another great part about Iguazu Falls is that you can actually speedboat through the water cascading down. It'll start off like any other boat ride, cruising about the waterfall. But make no mistake, it is a thrilling experience as soon as the boat picks up speed, disappearing into the swirling mist as the waterfall engulfs the boat. By the end of it, you'll be soaking wet in the most stunning landscape. Next at number three, learn tango in Buenos Aires. The capital of Argentina is known to be one of the most exhilarating cities in the world. Buenos Aires is famous for its astounding art, colorful neighborhoods, and a population that is devoted to having fun and partying the night away. It is said that Buenos Aires didn't truly find itself until tango musician Carlos Gardel sang the first tango hit back in 1917. Since then, tango has become an international part of Buenos Aires culture. From tango dances in the streets to dance halls to even dazzling dinner shows, there's no other city that has embraced a form of dance to this extent. We suggest you pack your dancing shoes so you can bust out a move or two yourself. Next, stroll through the Plaza Mayo. For those of you who admire scenic cityscapes, a stroll through the Plaza Mayo is a must. The city's main square is filled with towering European architecture, including the iconic pink house of Casa Rosada, where Madonna performed in the movie Evita. The square is also home to the most famous landmark, the Baroque Cathedral Metropolitana, which also holds the tomb of the most celebrated general, Jose de San Martin. If you're a history buff, you're in for a real treat. At number five, sip cocktails in the rainforest. What better way to relax after a speedboat ride through a beautiful waterfall than to sip cocktails looking at that view? You can always head to the balcony of your room at the Gran Molina Aguazu, located at the heart of the National Park, to relax. Soak in the view and enjoy Caparina cocktails, also known as the national drink of Brazil. Made from sugarcane, liquor, sugar, and lime, the Caparina cocktail is bound to freshen you up after a long day of exploring the rainforest. Another for our list, see the penguins on Martillo Island. If you're not planning on going to Antarctica anytime soon, but still want to acquaint yourself with a certain fuzzy black snowbird, the Magellanic and Gentoo penguin rookery tucked away on the island in Argentina are an attraction perfect for nature lovers. The rookery has more than 1,000 nests of not only penguins, but also South American terns, squaws, patrioles, comorants, and vultures. Next up, get a feel of salt flats. The salt flats in Argentina may not be as famous as the ones found in Bolivia, but they are every bit as amazing. Salinas Grandes offers an attractive combination of shimmering salt flats and charming little villages perfect for your aesthetic Instagram posts. On your way to the salt flats, you can always stop by Permamarca. It's a quaint little town known for its picturesque 17th century church, with the hills of seven colors in the backdrop. Sitting at number eight, discover the multicolored canyon. The multicolored canyon, Quebrada de Humahuaca, is one of the most stunning landmarks in Argentina. Four millions of years ago by mineral deposits, it is known for its colorful landscape. The best way to explore the rocky wonder authentically is to hop on the public bus from Salta or Jujuy. Next on our list, shoot the rapids and take on river rafting. Mendoza River offers the perfect water sport opportunity. Whitewater rafting is a fun adventure that'll give you an awesome workout, an adrenaline rush, and a beautiful view all at once. The rapids are class two to class four, and if you happen to be vacationing with family, children over 10 years of age can enjoy the rapids too. Now, turn it down a notch at a spa. Termas de Coquacha in Argentina provides the perfect place to slow down your vacation a bit. The Grotto Sauna has natural thermal spas and mud baths in the indoor as well as outdoor settings. You can fit in your spa day as a day trip to recover from all the partying and adventures. Up next, explore wine and vineyards. You could also explore Argentina one glass of wine at a time. There are countless little towns offering the perfect vineyard experience. There's a small town near Mendoza called Majpu, which is packed with wineries, olive oil farms, and other gourmet businesses, all of which offer a tour of their setup along with offering small samplings of their produce. It'll surely be a trip for your taste buds. A few companies in the town even rent out bikes and electric scooters to tourists. You can live your small town dream here, enjoying all that it offers. Next up, Cordoba. If you visit Argentina without stopping by Cordoba, you'd be missing out big time. Back in 2006, it was awarded the title of Cultural Capital of the Americas, and people say it fits perfectly. It is home to four of the finest galleries, all of which are focused on emerging contemporary, classical, and fine arts respectively. The best part is, you don't have to take buses and trains to experience them. They're all within easy walking distance of each other and located at the center of the city. You can always catch the best deals during weekends when young designers and artisans strut their stuff at the weekend crafts market that stretch out across 
multiple blocks. And if that's too much for your taste, picturesque little mountain villages are always just a short bus ride away. Next, you can eat and drink like locals. One of the best things about choosing Argentina as a vacation spot is that dining out is tasty yet not too heavy on your pocket. There are three things you absolutely must taste during your trip, steak, empanadas, and wine of course, which we already covered earlier on. If you're new to the cuisine, empanadas are kind of a small calzone that come in a variety of tasty fillings. Coming to the steaks, you're bound to get Argentina's best on your plate. Whether you decide on a swanky eatery or a small family style restaurant, you'll always have a list of prime cut options. From the thick and juicy sirloin to the famous ribeye, Argentina's food scene has an answer to all of your steak needs. And lastly, catch the local pato game. Pato game is a local Argentine sport and just so happens to be the country's national sport, which has been played since the early 1600s. The game is rather peculiar. Pato means duck in Spanish. The game in the olden days involves a live duck that was sewn into a leather skin with handles, making a ball, but with its head hanging out. If that's not weird enough, wait till you hear how it's played. The game used to begin with two players tugging on the handles until one had control of the ball. The player with the ball would then run off to the goal on horseback. The aim was similar to football, to reach the goal with the ball, only with a duck. Safe to say, it was a violent sport where players were often trampled mid-game. Thankfully though, the game has evolved over the years. Ducks are no longer involved in the game. Instead, there's just a ball, still called Pato by the way, with six handlers for the two teams to fight on. Horses, however, are still very much involved in a violent way. That wraps up our list for today. We hope you found plenty of ideas for your next vacation. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.